Stephen, what's with the labels? What are these labels? <laughs> I want to read the labels. Yeah. I'm very uh, concerned about the use of labels um, because if they're just informational, that's fine. If they're not, there are problems that come. And probably what I could tell you in order to make that difference is, um, for instance, you're Lena, I'm Stephen. That, that, that's our, uh, our respective names. That's a label. Um, I have sisters, so that means I'm a sibling. Yes. So that's information. Um, I mean, as we're talking now, there's a horrible uh, disaster uh, unfolding in Fort McMurray in Alberta. Well, that's a fact. That's a label. Mm -hmm. But um, when you have people using labels in a judgmental way, um, I found that a really uh, important thing to be aware of and to, as far as possible, resist labeling. Because labels used in that way hurt people. And here's what I mean by that. Um, I'm, as I said, almost 70 years old. Mm -hmm. I think that makes me old. And so if old is used as a judgmental label, um, many people who are further on in their life uh, will actually tell you that that means you're um, seen as not as valuable, um, you're in decline, you're not as sharp, you don't move as quickly, and there are judgments then made about the value of the person. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, right. Some of my uh, attitude about this comes too from the fact that uh, at this point in my life, I am a spouse, I'm a dad, um, I'm a former teacher, um, I had a very brief foray into law, um, I'm a good friend to people, um, I'm a good musician, mm -hmm. um, contributor to and society, all of that, of mm -hmm. course, those are labels, but the one label that um, is used at the top of the list about me is when people find out that I'm a gay man, because all of a sudden, the other things don't really matter as much. It's all your day. And I'm tired of that kind of thing. Um, and it actually comes mainly from people of my own age. It's yes. not from young people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's hope. <laughs> but it's just interesting that the uh, way in which we choose to um, the way in which we uh, seem to want to label things mm -hmm. is in order to um, make a judgment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm of an age where that whole thing of coming out was uh, difficult mm -hmm. um, and in some ways dangerous for a time. Um, and I can certainly tell you that I uh, challenged my own children when they found out that at age 50, their dad was coming out. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the, my great uh, comfort there is, uh, with my three kids, that's not an issue anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm just interested in how labels get prioritized. Yes, yes. And I think also, someone, another another young lady that I interviewed, um, it made me think of what she said, and she said, um, "Pure heart versus intention, like meaning intention." So you know, so it's it's really the there 
why are they describing me as such and uh, to what purpose and in what tone, yeah. right? Yeah. Whether it's hurtful or not yeah. or whether it's, I guess, pertaining to uh, the situation, the context. Yeah. And there's another thing, and that comes from my experience as a teacher. Um, yes, you can say that. In the days when I taught, which were from the late 60s until 2001, um, during most of that time, there were three categories of students <laughs> in high school. And um, these were labels. So <laughs> the kids who would be university bound were called in those days the advanced stream. Oh, yes, I mean, that's and true. Those mm -hmm. who weren't. Mm -hmm. but we're going to go into things like trades well, and more practical, non-academic work, we're called the general school. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the kids who didn't have as strong intellectual abilities uh, to uh, be in either the general or the advanced stream were called the basic stream. Mm -hmm. And I discovered the horrible consequences of that kind of labeling um, because in fact what happened is that there was a quite snobbish attitude amongst my colleagues and that's what we're talking about here not some of us um, that um, teaching the advanced kids was seen as very desirable uh, teaching the general kids quite a bit less desirable and if you taught basic kids it was considered to be like a waste of your time and I'm so happy to be able to say that that wasn't a hundred percent across the board because I uh, in fact got to know really good teachers who taught uh, they in fact uh, I would say shared my attitude, which is you don't teach advanced, general, or basic, you teach students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those, uh, that kind of labeling I found, and you see it was um, systematized. It was, mm -hmm. or maybe what I mean is systemic. Um, mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was the way it was, and so very often uh, students, instead of being encouraged, worked not upward but downward to the label that they had been mm. shouldered with. Yes, oh. yes, because uh, yes, they they kind of act out what is expected of them yeah. or yeah. what they're told that they yeah. are, yeah. right? Mm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. my last 11 years as a teacher, in fact, uh, were spent in a wonderful, uh, very small school for it's, uh, adult students, uh, not here in Toronto, and I'm uh, sorry to say, but at the time that I was teaching those students, Toronto was shutting down adult education, but I worked uh, in a uh, school board that um, is uh, in the Oshawa area, and we had a very, very fine uh, colleague of mine from other uh, school who became the principal of a school where people who had not completed their high school diploma actually came back and it wasn't to do an equivalency they actually uh, had real courses and the uh, this sounds a bit smug, but um, the very small staff that uh, I was part of, we were all hand-picked because mm -hmm. of our attitude. Mm -hmm. um, and so what happened is that those people, uh, and we had students anywhere from their, their early 20s and a few in their late 60s, mm -hmm. and back they came um, feeling quite defeated that they had failed. And the first thing that our staff told them is, well, actually, you didn't fail. The system failed you. Uh, there wasn't any interest at that time that you were in regular school. 
Uh, there wasn't an interest to accommodate you to see uh, what uh, uh, help you might need. And the attitude was that you can't cut it, get out of it. Anyway, the big thrill of those 11 years was working with students and uh, my colleagues, um, where the whole idea was, okay, you're back here, here's the new reality, um, we need you to grow your wings so that you fly somewhere and we will help you grow the wings. And that was such a thrill. Mm. See, it's a student, it's things like this, like your your unique uh, perspective, even as a teacher, that no, you don't you don't believe people are basic, general, or advanced. Yeah. That you just teach. That uh, the, yeah. the students are from many different backgrounds, and some are under. Uh, not as privileged, yep. and they come from you know abused backgrounds, and yep. that affects school and so forth. But uh, you just have this uh, unique, very deep perspective uh, about everything, like life in general. Where where did you get that from? Was it just uh, <laughs> uh, in some? Uh, seminal ways from my parents who I would say uh, presented my sisters and me with that idea that if you work hard you can succeed uh, you don't have limitations no one has limitations um, there's a basic regard that you have for all people and they may have um, skills that you never even dreamed of. So don't be so quick to come to a conclusion. Some of them are. Some are gradually closing. Yeah, Richmond's trading.